As we said, ensemble algorithms refers to、um, a framework of constructing algorithms as、uh, as opposed to some specific algorithm. So there are quite a large number of different choices. For example, we can construct the weak classifiers with respect to different subsets of、uh, the trained sample. This family of algorithm is called bagging. Have a look at、uh, this example.、Uh, this table shows a data set, and the first nine columns represent the attribute. And attributes and、uh, the last column represent the target value we would like to predict. And each of the row of the table represent an individual data sample. When we train the classifier models we have introduced so far in the first three weeks, we would like provide the entire table to the model. And perform a feed function of those models to the data, but in the bagging scheme,、uh, we first take a subset from the data and provide only the subset, those、um, green colored rows, to、uh, whatever classifier. Because bagging is a framework, as we said, it can accommodate different. Uh, classifiers. We call those weak classifiers because each of those subclassifier does not see the entire dataset. So we would expect its、uh, predictive capability would be weaker than a classifier that、uh, let's call it strong that can see the in that can see the entire dataset. The idea of bagging is that instead of have one strong classifier, we randomly draw different subsets from the dataset and provide those datasets to different weak classifiers. By assembling those weak classifiers, we ex expect that the collective prediction of a bagging、uh, scheme would be better than. A strong classifier that uh, uh, was to be trained on the entire dataset. A more sophisticated scheme than simply bagging a classifier to train on different subsets is to draw the subsets according to some scheme.、Um, this、um, subset generation generating schemes is according to the prediction. Of previously trained weak classifiers, so instead of joining the subsets for each weak classifier uniformly, randomly from the entire dataset, we can draw them from the dataset according to the performance of the weak classifiers we already have. So this scheme is called boosting. Uh, one particularly interesting、uh, algorithm of boosting is called AdaBoost, which is the main tool we would like to introduce later in this class. We suggested earlier, and can be imagined easily and naturally, that instead of only manipulating the data samples. One can also consider training classifier, weak classifier, weak predictors on the subset of data attributes. So not only a weak predictor can only see part of the data samples; it can also be limited in the range of data attributes to be used to do predictions. And this scheme is often applied to weak classifiers that explicitly use individual attributes of data, such as decision trees. Decision trees constructed in this way 
uh, when they assemble together, would uh, process data like give um, test sample, it will simultaneously go through multiple trees, exploring uh, multiple different attributes of the data. We call this family of algorithm random forest. In a general sense, ensemble algorithms or the kind of framework can be ubiquitous in practical problems. Many of uh, those uh, schemes is uh, designed because engineering uh, practical engineering necessities, such as if um, we have only binary classifier, but uh, as we introduced in the digital uh, handwritten digital number classification problem, if we have only binary classifier, but would like to distinguish uh, 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 between multiple classes, in this way we can train multiple binary classifiers to distinguish each pair of those classes, and uh, at last. We let those classifiers to have a vote and to see which class gets the most vote. In this way, we can combine binary classifiers into multi-class classifiers. And that is uh, one way of making an ensemble. And, the, and on the other hand, many of uh, the algorithms, um, uh, many of the Predict predictive models involve complicated parameters and uh, it can be difficult to find a globally optimal configuration of those parameters. So the fitting or training algorithm can only be performed locally and uh, one would be happy with something we call it local optimal. But not all local optimal are optimal. So the performance of uh, complicated algorithms tend to be instable uh, sometimes. To deal with this issue, one can start the training of the algorithm, that is the adjustment of the parameters of the model from different random initial starting points. In this way, although the model is exactly the same and the training uh, algorithm is the same, and the training data is the same, but we can arrive at different predictive models. At last, we can add those, uh, let those models to vote, also vote, um, to get a collective prediction. In this way, we can reduce the instability of the class of a predictor that is being uh, entailed in the training process. It is another kind of ensemble. The main algorithm we would like to discuss today is a, a boosting algorithm called AdaBoost. Before we get into the construction and the details of the algorithm, let's have a very quick glance on how the algorithm uh, works uh, and how it has been constructed and how it will work. Uh, the example is extremely simple. We have a, a dataset of 10 samples and uh, the attribute of the dataset is only one real number from 0 point, uh, 0 0.1 to 1.0, okay, this way. And uh, the target value of the sample uh, data is uh, from uh, in the, in the binary classification problem, uh, either to be one or minus one, okay. Um, anyway, it has two classes. But the tricky part of uh, this problem is that the target value for predict uh, for the target value for the uh, data which where the attribute is less 
then 0 0.4 is in one class and that class also applies to the data sample that has the attribute greater than 0 0.7 so we have uh, something like a sandwich uh, target distribution and uh, what is our weak classifiers we will use only decision trees instead of uh, a complicated decision trees we only let those decision trees has one level so basically we call them decision stumps short trees and trees has been um, trimmed to nearly the end, the root so this decision stamp has very limited power of uh, uh, distinction it can because you can only have uh, one decision to make and this one decision according to this uh, one scalar attributes has to be if the scalar greater or uh, less than some real value so if you use these decision stamps to cut the data set you can either cut this way so have uh, samples on the left side ha have one kind of target value and uh, samples on the right hand side have another target value but in this way uh, you will misclassify of course a significant portion of the training data, uh, data. Um, wherever you cut the data and uh, however you decide which side has which kind of target value so the ida boost algorithm works like this so at first each of the data sample are given uh, uh, is given the same weight so when we randomly draw the samples from the data a, sub a subset of samples from the data we draw them uniformly and uh, in this case we draw a subset like this look some of the samples are missing like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 but some are drawn multiple times like the 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 using this data set to uh, construct a decision stamp which is a fancy name is to find somewhere to cut the data sample in two ways probably it will cut this way right but uh, uh, look the missed samples 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 probably won't be classified correctly in this way so let's have a look yes the cutting is done here the split point is 0 0.75 and uh, we get these three samples misclassified the, in the next stamp uh, in the next step we will have the second decision stamp to to be done and before we train the decision stamp we draw a subset of uh, the samples from uh, a newly form uh, from the entire set but using newly adjusted uh, widths the essence of the algorithm is it gives more width to the sample that has been misclassified look and uh, in this the next round the me, the, mis the samples that has been misclassified in the previous round get more weight and uh, is uh, better represented in the new set of subsamples. So, probably the second uh, classifier will classify those um, uh, those uh, previously wrongly predicted samples better, and uh, that is our second classifier. Note that we also give a weight to each of the classifier which will be uh, clear later and so on so forth after build three classifiers and successfully reproduce the target values on this um, training, training data set using simple uh, decision stamps which when used individually cannot reproduce this uh, target value distribution Let's see how to use the scikit-learn package to implement an ADA boost classifier um, before we go into the details of the construction of those uh, models. So let's use the scikit-learn model 
and uh, um, not surprisingly, the <coughs> AdaBoost classifier belongs to a submodule called Ensemble. From secular.ensemble import AdaBoost classifier. Um, it's many models, it has a classifier and a regressor. We will use the classifier and um, for this example, we also um, revisit our old friend, the Iris dataset. Well, that is a very convenient set for prototyping some idea or algorithm, at least to test the sanity of a uh, uh, kind of algorithm. Load Iris. If you remember from the last week's lecture, this uh, function will help you um, get the training and the test samples of the iris dataset, and that is the function to return an object that contains both the, the observable x part and uh, the target value y part of uh, the data. And for the third part, we will need over another old friend that is from the model selection submodule import the train test split function so that we can um, split the dataset into the training and test part to evaluate our algorithm. Let's run this cell to have those functionality ready and uh, to load the data we should be now so far familiar with um, uh, standard procedure load the data and uh, allocate the training and the test data set data subset the train x train y and test y let these are the subsets returned by the train test split um, data dot data and data dot target. Note the first data refers to the object returned by the load iris function and it is contained a field called the data and this data uh, refers to the traditionally called X part and the observable part of the data samples. So let's run this cell, get the data ready. We can have a look. Train.x. Note if you are using Python 3, we will need a pair of parentheses here. Uh, and also note that. Um, one of uh, a very good friend of us, uh, our classmate, he proposed to me uh, last week a solution to uh, create a virtual environment within uh, one Python installation so that you can use notebook for both Python 3 and Python 2. The solution has been published on UTS Online in the general discussion f discussion forum. Okay, uh, anyway, let's have a look at the training data. So, as expected, it's an array. And then now, have a look at the ship. Well, Pretty much ex as expected. So, uh, as uh, the usual usage of uh, data models provided by the six learn package, we will uh, in instantiate uh, object of a boost classifier. Let's call it a boost classifier ABC the boost classifier and let us use its um, default arguments and use uh, we fit this ABC let me guess I 
I think the feed function would have uh, the universal interface for all the data models in in the uh, provided by the scheduler package. But well, let's bet on it. Fit train x and train y. Let's run the cell. See what we will get. Okay, it seems that we uh, guess it correctly. But um, for the ultimate test, we need to use this fitted model to predict the values on the test data set and see how the model performs, um, how is the classification's accuracy. So let's do it. And also we bet it would have, oh, this time we do not need to bet. Let's click the tab okay, to see if we have this function. Sure, we have. The predict function of this ABC object. Uh, let us provide the test x to the predict function. We call it test predictions. Okay. And uh, using our old tradition to count the number, count non zero, test predict. Uh, which is equal to test y and test y is the ground truth value of the target value. Okay. The this number is to be divided by the total number converted to fluid type test y dot size. That would be the classific classification accuracy of the model on the test data set. Well, to become compatible to Python 3, let's add a pair of parentheses and see what we will get. Well, the performance of an accuracy nearly 90% is of course not uh, the optimum value for such a simple function, a uh, simple problem. But at least it shows that um, we have arrived a reasonable classifier on this data set and uh, serves the purpose of demonstrating uh, construct a data boost classifier on this uh, data set. Uh, to improve the performance, we need some further knowledge about this algorithm. Uh, it is quite natural mm, for an algorithm, especially of uh, certain level of complexity, we need careful training of the algorithm to suit the data set of uh, interest. Let us see a sketch of the AdaBoost algorithm. This algorithm runs for multiple runs. In each of the round, a weak classifier will be built and uh, its prediction will be added to the collective predicting uh, prediction scheme and in each of the round uh, first we build a specific target for this particular weak classifier the target will be the weighted error among the training samples and uh, after training the weak classifier, we will compute and assign a weight to that classifier. And uh, the third step is to update the simple weights in the construction of the error function of the next round. Then this entire uh, process goes on until we reach a certain level of uh, training uh, error that means the training error is smaller than uh, or equal to a preset level or we have reached the maximum number of weak classifiers in training the weak classifier or weak predictor we need to note that the error mirrors on each of the training sample are weighted. That is, 
when the predictor makes a prediction on the training on um, the individual training samples, if the prediction is distinctive from the target value, that would incur a loss, uh, which is a cost of making wrong predictions. And this cost is uh, not equal among all the training samples. Some, some of the loss, some of the costs will count more than the others. So uh, we call that the error is weighted, and the weak classifier would be trained to minimize the weighted loss instead of uh, uh, a, a loss that has been computed uniformly among all the training samples, as we previously uh, do. The design principle for this weighted loss or weighted error cost is that we would like in each round let the weak classifier to concentrate on those samples that has been wrongly predicted by the previous classifiers so that in each of the step the ensemble has uh, its prediction improved on the training data set. In the mathematical equations in the slides, this capital D represents the weight and uh, the, subscript, uh, the subscript T represents the round. So DT represents the weight function of the T round of the rounding of a double algorithm and uh, the argument for all the input of the weight function is a particular training sample x i that means the i uh, training samples a uh, training sample so dt x i means at the teeth round if uh, we predict the i training sample wrongly how much cost uh, will this wrong prediction incur? And uh, the binary function 1 followed by a bracket means uh, a judgment if uh, the prediction on this particular training sample is correct or wrong. That is like the Python uh, comparison function we have used in our programming. But with a slight adjustment, uh, here we uh, the here the true value represent that the prediction is different from the target value. So instead of measuring the accuracy, we are measuring the loss. So the true value corresponding to one means that there is a loss of one, and that is of course would be weighted by the dt x i. And uh, if uh, the comparison returns false, that means the prediction is equal to the target value, then there would be no loss incurred, uh, whatever the weight function is. In the second step, after we have fit a weak classifier to the weighted sample, we also allocate a weight for the classifier. Uh, or predictor so that uh, in the combination of all the weak predictors it will have a, a weight of the prediction made by this particular predictor and that weight is determined by the equation here let's explain it the equation is half of the algorith logarithm of a fraction and the fraction is uh, one minus a uh, weighted and uh, normalized error over the error itself so from an intuitive point of view uh, let's forget about the constant factor a half uh, at the first place and consider the fraction in the logarithm and when the error is small one minus that error will be close to one.
because the error has been normalized between 0 and 1, a small error corresponding a number that is close to 0. And when a 0 has been put to the denominator, it will act as a magnifying factor. So the fraction within the logarithm will be large, and the uh, logarithm is a monotonically increasing function. So the result of this width will be large. And on the other hand, when the, when the error is large, which is close to 1, 1 minus the error, that is the, let's say, accuracy, will be small and uh, close to 0. And 0, when it is divided by something close to 1, it uh, will also be small. And the logarithm of a small number uh, close to zero will be a negative number, and uh, the mag magnitude of the number will be large. That is, uh, the absolute value of the negative number will be large if the error is very close to one and the accuracy is close to zero. This design is deliberate. If a predictor has a, an error rate that is close to 1 and accuracy close to 0, we would, uh, as we mentioned earlier, f use in practice use the predictor in a flipped way. That is, when that predictor predicts a sample in one way, we would like to take the sample as another way. So we give the predictor a negative weight. And uh, in the third case is when a predictor has uh, an error rate close to 0 0.5. In this case, this predictor is, uh, uh, well, very useless because there isn't much information conveyed by its prediction. According to that equation, the one minus the weighted error would be close to 0 0.5 and the error itself is close to 0 0.5 and uh, the fraction is close to 1. The logarithm of um, a number that is close to 1 will be close to 0. So for such a uh, useless predictor, it will have a weight close to 0. So here is the, the curve of uh, the weight function of the predictors. As we expected, when the accuracy increases, the weight increases. When the accuracy uh, pass the 0 0.5 borderline, the, the weight will become negative. And when the accuracy is uh, close to the 0 0.5, uh, borderline, so the predictor will have a close to zero weight, which uh, effectively eliminate its uh, function in the combined final prediction made by the ensemble. The third step is to update the sample weight. So uh, the weight of a sample will get magnified when it has been wrongly classified by a predictor that predicts mostly correct on the entire sample set, uh, data set, and uh, it will get reduced, the weight of sample will get reduced when it has been predicted correctly. So, look, this uh, uh, enlarge or reduce scheme is according to two factors. One is whether the sample has been correctly predicted. That is normal because um, consider that we would like to put more attention on the samples that hasn't been correctly classified. And on the other hand, it is also been affected by how good the previous classifier uh, predictor is. If, uh, 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 and that is also natural. Consider if uh, a predictor is performs very good 
and it makes some small errors, some errors, a minority of samples. This particular minority must be very difficult to classify, or to predict, and in the next round we need to really enlarge or really pay more attention to this um, minority group of the population. And on the other hand, if uh, a predictor is uh, itself does not perform very well, maybe just slightly better than random guess. So if uh, a sample has been wrongly predicted by that uh, predictor, we wouldn't worry too much. We can just slightly increase this group's uh, uh, weight in the next round of training and see how things may uh, change for the better in the next round. After adjusting the sample width, we need to normalize those widths so that the width of all the samples in the training dataset sum to 1. Here is a more detailed a pseudo code or a list of the steps in the AdaBoost algorithm. There is only one detail we need to pay more attention in this case. In the second step, when we need to um, fit the one of the weak classifiers or predictors to weighted data, we have two ways to um, achieve this uh, weighted uh, to achieve this weighted training. One way is uh, straightforwardly, we can give the error the classifier make the predictor mix on each of the data sample a weight and try to minimize this weighted error instead of uh, uh, ev uniformly averaged error. And on the other hand, we can draw a subset, randomly draw a subset from the, the, the original training dataset and joining them according to the weight each data sample gets. If we remember uh, from our previous, our earlier discussion, at the third step when we update the weight of the dataset, we need to, uh, we need a normalization step so to guarantee the weight over each of the data sample will sum to 1 in, uh, over the entire data set. This step will, uh, uh, will guarantee that the, when we, we can understand, we can consider the weight of each of the data samples as uh, the distribution function of the data pop of the training data population. And the weight can be simply initial of the data samples can be simply initialized as one over the number of data samples. So in this step, we can randomly draw <coughs> a subset of the training data sample according to the weight. So, and uh, the number of the, uh, the samples to be drawn uh, can be and cannot be um, the same as the training simple error uh, numbers uh, such as n. You can also use another m here as long well as you draw the samples according to the weight given to the individual samples. Uh, and of course, in this way, the, the algorithm will behave stochastically because there is a, a no way to know ahead which subsamples can be drawn. There is a small probability that actually we draw samples that has a small width from the data sample and the, the drawn sub, subset is not representative of the width we have given to the samples in the previous step. That is possible. But um, over long run, we can uh, we can see that the stochastically implemented algorithm will have the same behavior as if we directly optimize the weighted error on the entire data sample. This that this implementation has uh, has the advantage that um, in many cases the optimization step is not a trivial 
uh, calculation. It may incur complicated operations to search uh, within the parameter space of the model. <laughs> the uniform, because after you have drawn the subsamples, you can perform uniform, uh, uniform error on this subsample and uh, do a normal transition. The normal transition, the, the mathematical, uh, when you implement it on a digital computer, tends to be easier than you implement a weighted uh, optimization. So that is um, the step we need to pay attention to.